Before we can start working with exponents, it's important to even understand why we do this. Uh, in mathematics, a lot of times we use lots of numbers, and sometimes the numbers are multiplied a lot. So for example, let's say I have uh, you know, 2 times 2, and I want to keep going, times 2 times 2 times 2. Now obviously this is a bit of a lengthy way to figure this out. Of course I can figure out what the answer is. The answer is, let's say 2 times 2 is going to be 4. That answer then times 2 is going to be 8. 8 times 2 is going to be 16. 16 times 2 is going to be 32. So that's one way of saying 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. But it's very long to write it this way. So in mathematics, we have a nice, simple, compact way to write the same thing. Since we're always multiplying the same number 2, we'll make that the base. And we're just going to raise it to that power. So for example, if I have 2 multiplied by itself 5 times, and that's going to be 2 to the power of 5. Or that's what this exponent is. So this is working with exponents, is things to the power of something else. So this 2 to the power of 5 like this really means write down 2, multiply it by itself 5 times. Okay, 2 to the power of 5 is not 2 times 5. Again, your calculator can deal with that as well. So I'll bring in my trusted calculator here. And if I do that, I can actually, uh, I'll just clear my screen here. So I want 2 to the power this is a little symbol on your calculator for power of. It's usually this little, some people call it a carrot. So 2 to the power of 5, and it's going to give me 32. Remember I talked about that before, that 2 to the power of 5 should be 32. So just talking about exponents here, the idea is making it as easy as possible. So I'm going to go over some of the rules now. And there's a number of rules for exponents. These are different tricks, you know, for making your life a little bit easier and working with things. So I'm going to write down a general rule. I'll write them in red here. So um, now in math, we like to formalize things. So we use letters to you know, mean just about anything. In this case, I mean, what if I take x to the m and multiply it by x to the n? In other words, what if I have two numbers with the same base? So let's say this was like a 2. 2 to the power of something times 2 to the power of something else. What would I have? And this nice easy trick is that x to the m times x to the n is going to be x to the m plus n. That's this rule of exponents. I'll give you an example for each of these. I think it's maybe a good idea. So let's say I do uh, something like uh, 3 to the power of 2. I'm going to multiply that by 3 to the power of 5. See, that's, that's using this rule. This rule of something to the power of something times the same bottom number here, multiply, uh, sorry, to the power of something different. So 3 to the 2 times 3 to the 5. And the rule says to do 3 to the power of 2 plus 5, so that's going to be 7. Now, I mean, it's, it's not happening like this because of a rule. It turns out this is the way numbers work, and this is just a nice easy trick to remember it. Okay, so for example, here I'm going to get 3 to the power of 7 in this case. Now let's do another rule. Another rule that's pretty important is uh, instead of multiplying things, I can divide them. So what if I have x to the m, I'll use the same maybe notation like this. So x to the m, uh, maybe I don't need brackets here. I'll just erase it. So let's just say I have x to the m divided by, oops, we got to be careful here. So x to the m divided by x to the n. By the way, I could also written that as x to the m over x to the n. The same thing. It turns out if I'm dividing two numbers with the same base but different exponent, well, rather than add the two, maybe you can figure out that dividing is going to be opposite, so it's going to be m minus n. So I'll give you an example here. So let's say I do something like... Well, here, I'll write them in a different way here. I'll write them like we... We we're talking about before here with the x to the m divided by x to the n. So I'll write it like this. Maybe y to the power of 6. It can be a letter as well. It can be numbers or letters. It doesn't matter. y to the 6 over y to the 4. This is the same format as this. It may not look like it. This division symbol, well, sometimes we like to write it with an actual line and put it over it. I kind of prefer looking at it like this. I think this looks a little bit nicer to me, but oh well. So the trick says to do... Take your base and raise it to the exponent of the 2 subtracted here. So in other words, I'm going to take y to the power of 6 
minus 4. I'll write that down. 6 minus 4. That means I'm going to finally get y to the power of, well, 6 minus 4 is 2. So that's going to be y squared. Notice I can't really do that on my calculator. The reason my calculator won't help me in the case of letters is because my calculator doesn't know what y is. y could be anything. y could be 1, 2, 3, 28 billion, anything. Negative 2. y could be anything we make it. But as long as we just keep this placeholder for it, it doesn't matter what we make it. So we can do anything we want it. So your calculator here is kind of useless in that case. Let's talk about a few more rules. So I don't want students to always rely on their calculators. Really, you should be able to do some of this stuff yourself. And if a teacher really wants to test if you can use your calculator, they'll often phrase it in such a way where they put letters. And sometimes it's more difficult. There are calculators now that can work with this, but oftentimes uh, your teachers won't let you use them or they'll make the questions even nastier in order to make you show that you know what you're doing. So what if we have an exponent to the power of another exponent? Well then, we just make it x to the power of m times n. So then we multiply them. That's that rule. So I'll give you an example of that. So let's say I'm doing something like uh, 2 to the power of 2. And I take that, raise it to the power of, let's say, 8. So I can use that same trick. So that means I take 2 and I multiply it to the power of 2 times 8. I don't always put an x. I don't like putting an x for times because I get confused then with the letter x and times. So I usually use a dot. But uh, those who are very careful might wonder, well, why is it that I use a dot? Because later on with vectors, uh, I use something called a dot product. And that's something different. So for right now, I'll be a little bit sloppy and just use dots for times. So I have 2 to the power of 2 times 8, which gives me 2 to the power of 16. Now, thankfully, I don't feel like uh, calculating all that. A lot of times the goal is just to figure out what the exponent is. We could actually figure it out by doing 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, figure that out 16 times. That's a bit lengthy. Thankfully, if we really want to know what that was, I could just do 2 to the power of 16, and I get some huge number. Right? So 65,536. Uh, but what if I wanted 2 to the power of you know, 80 or something like that? Well, that's maybe a little bit lengthy to do by your hand. And we're going to see that this notation here, this 1.2e24, is going to be important. That's what we call scientific notation. I'll be doing some videos uh, very soon about how to deal with scientific notation as well. So let's maybe do uh, one more little rule here for this one. Um, let's see here. So this next rule, this is a really easy one, I think. It's anything, so maybe x to the power of 0, it's always going to be 1. It doesn't matter what you raise to the power of 0. It could be some absolutely insane number, but if I raise it to the power of 0, it, the answer is going to be 1. So for example, I can make it something totally ridiculous like, uh, I don't know, like 5, 1, 2, 4, 3, 8. So let's just say, um, maybe I throw in an x, and maybe I take that and divide it by something really nasty, maybe some square roots, put all that in there. A lot of students then will start sweating profusely, I think, if they saw a question like this. But then, I make it really easy, I take that whole thing and raise it to the power of zero. Well, that's great, because this to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is one. In other words, although I made it look really nasty, anything to the power of zero is still going to give you one. That's a nice, easy trick. Try to remember that. Uh, one other thing is anything, by the way, if we don't say what power it is, it's always implied to be to the power of 1. So, for example, if I just have x just by itself, let's just say I wrote down just an x. Well, x to the power of 1 is the same thing as just x. So we often, we don't really put in the 1 here. It's implied. Yeah, maybe that's not so important. Just, uh, just a little thing to note.